think, uh, I think it's very clear. We are finally here coming, looking. It looks like I am biased here, but we do believe we're from the gaming side and Web3 Gaming, where we see the best use case for gaming, uh, for Web3 being gaming, right? We have some of the good co-founders, founders, and some very strong speakers who are going to share their viewpoint on what makes Web3 gaming, right? We're going to address points from esports perspective, community building, play and earn concepts, and, commu and uh, where, where we have here, influencers, right? Uh, I want everyone to just introduce themselves. I'm not sure if anyone knows the gaming side of it, but uh, please. Hi everyone, I'm Dhruv Garg. Uh, I'm a tech policy lawyer, work very closely on gaming, Web3. Uh, today I'm representing All India Gaming Federation, which works very closely with gaming generally. Uh, so yeah, that's. Hello guys, Abhishek Agarwal this side. I'm the founder and CEO of Trinity Gaming India. We are the leading gaming content and marketing company coming out from India. We are supporting the overall gaming ecosystem to develop and gamers to monetize their craft. Hi everyone, this is Parth, uh, leading Stan. Uh, Stan is a community play for eSports. Uh, we are doing a derivative through NFTs and collectibles for eSports, uh, targeting mainly the uh, Gen Zs and Millennials. I think everybody here would be targeting the same. Yeah. Hi everyone, this is Manish here. Hi everyone, this is Manish here. Uh, I started a startup last year which is around a building gamers community across the emerging markets. It's called IndieGG and uh, lovely. I don't know how many of you are interested in gaming with raise of your hands if you can really share. I think we can make this panel more interactive. What do you guys want to know? A uh, few of the brave souls which have stood by the day and uh, yeah, it's been a long day. So Shamili, let's make it easier in, uh, for them. Sure, I'm actually going to start with what everyone's going to say and we'll pick up along the way. I do believe Web3 is new, Web3 gaming is more exciting and absolutely everyone's learning along the way. So I, my first question, we know that a lot of, lot of discussion and policy has been taking place. So let's have uh, Dhruv and Manish throw some light there. So Dhruv, can you tell me what are the challenges you're facing? What do you think are the solutions? Something on a more basic level at the Web3 gaming level where we can throw light on the gaming side of things. Sure, so uh, to begin with, I think uh, the bi biggest challenge that Web3 generally, and especially if you, even if you talk about Web3 gaming is that, you know, Web3 is a technology, right? There are multiple facets to it, correct? Okay? You could have tokens, you can have uh, cryptocurrencies as they say, it. you can have NFTs, you can have different use cases tokens and NFTs, correct? And gaming is one application of the technology. Sure. The problem is that right now, governments across the globe, and specifically in India, correct, are looking at this whole technology with one single lens, correct? Sometimes they assume it's only about speculation in a market, correct? Uh, there are issues that they look at money laundering, uh, they look at whether, you know, this KYC, et cetera, cross-border transaction, whether what will be the impact on the monetary and fi uh, financial policies of a country. So these are the issues that they're looking at. However, what they're not looking at right now is that it is not so much about web it's about what it is used for, correct? So that distinction of the use cases of this technology is something I think is needed by the government and by multiple stakeholders. That clarity, bringing that clarity is one of the biggest challenges, the necessity to have sort of give the founders and co-founders here the runway to sort of grow in a more certain regulatory favor. That I think that's one of the uh, biggest challenges. And then obviously there are nuances to it, but I'll leave that to Manish. So I think very well put, Dhruv. Uh, <clears throat> fundamentally, in any evolving space, there would be some things which is negative and there can be some positive use cases. Now, in the morning, I think Professor Damodaran said very well that as a policy maker, if you start to only build policy to address the negative aspects, then you will only build very restrictive thought process, which is going to stifle the growth. Um, and that will not create a balanced approach. So I think from a gaming perspective, uh, if you want to truly create a free liquid market where gamers can leverage their skill, time, uh, fandom, then there has to be manifestation of economic value which they can earn. 
Now, whether it is about streamers, whether it's about influencers, whether it's about gamers, uh, the core promise is that you can be the owner of your own uh, outcome, of your skill and time. And that ownership, whatever comes out of that ownership, you can trade it, you can monetize it. Uh, and that creates a beautiful freelancing market opportunities in gaming and India could be a very strong global digital factory for the games around the world. However, if you kind of create a fear that it's illegal, if you create a fear and perception that this is something which parents should not be allowing their kids to indulge, then I think we are kind of really stifling uh, and going back 10 years because whether we like it or not, the adoption of principles of blockchain in gaming in the world will happen. Now the choice is whether an Indians should be allowed to partake in that opportunity or will continue to sit by the by side and let the next phase of gaming happen. Uh, I've been in gaming for 20 years, uh, 15 years. Uh, and I have seen that we missed the bus twice. And if we continue to be with a very restrictive mindset, we'll again miss the bus. And uh, people like me, the young Parth, Abhishek, will take the mantle of going to global conferences saying that India is a sleeping tiger and one day it will awake. I've been doing that for 15 years and I don't want them to be doing it for the next 15 years. True, true. Thanks, thanks. So, Manish, I've also heard you say that Web3 will disrupt gaming, right? So, can you, can you tell me why you think gaming is touted as the biggest use case and adoption of blockchain? See, if you look at it from a gamer point of view, gamers don't care a fig about Web3, Web2, blockchain, all of that. Gaming is a purest form of entertainment because it is interactive and it releases dopamine. And that's what people really keep coming and playing and playing the game again and again. And if it's a multiplayer game, every experience is a different experience. And that's the beauty of this entertainment format, which is why globally it is bigger than music, it is bigger than anything else. Now, having established that gaming is the entertainment format, the op the gaming gamers, if you see, they spend considerable amount of time just to share with you. In India, a mid-core, hardcore gamers spends roughly 60 to 90 minutes per day. Now that's a lot of time and there some people purchase items, some people spend time to collect items, build their own assets. Now I can upgrade my account, I can build assets. Both of that is an outcome of the time which I've spent or money I've spent or both. Today, when PUBG gets banned, my entire effort in that game goes waste. If I, game doesn't even go, but if I have to move from, let's say, CSGO to a new game, every skin which I purchased, everything I've done in the game stays in that gaming ecosystem. That only happens in gaming. If you today buy a mobile phone, yes, there is a residual secondary market value and you own it, you don't have to take permission from anyone. You buy a house, you have spent the money, there is a clear ownership right, you go and sell. But in gaming, what you create, what you buy is doesn't belong to you, is not intuitive. And hence people, especially in emerging markets, continue to see that as discretionary spent. And when the mindset changes from discretionary spend to investment, your number of purchases will increase, number of times you are purchasing it will increase and the value which you are willing to invest will be higher and hence the revenue in the game will increase. And I have seen, if you look at history of gaming, every five, seven, eight years the business models change and that's the only reason gaming is where it is. And in 15 years, I've seen three gaming mo revenue models, business models change. And your shift in mindset from expense to investment is the, is the primary reason why asset ownership, reputation ownership will disrupt the gaming for next seven, eight years. Sure, 
uh, I think there's, there's much more value which finally brings it to the play and earn concept. We will come back to that later. Meantime, Dhruv, any thought on this, on how it's the best use case? Sure, so I mean, I'll just carry yeah, forward sure. from what Manish ji said. So, till now gaming, and the, the core of gaming is that dopamine hit, correct? That interaction giving you that satisfaction in your brain, you know, you achieving something in a pleasurable activity. That, that's what gaming is. Now add ownership and decentralized ownership. So now any asset that you create in that Web3 space, in that game, is yours. Right? So now you have added that econo economic value from the time that we spent in it. So for, let, let, me, let me take a step back. So for example, till now if you see World of Warcraft accounts were sold online, correct? Uh, PUBG skins we are talking about. So in-game assets, people were crazy about in-game assets. But the problem was that these, if they are banned on that platform, if that platform is banned itself, or for some other reason that server is gone, correct? But now if you shift it to Web3, now they have that decentralized satisfaction. That, okay, I have that trust that if I earn something from here, it'll remain there. So community around gaming becomes much more stronger when they together know that, oh, these assets that we're working together has that value and that value will remain. And the time and effort that I'm spending is giving me pleasure as well as some economic value. So I think, broadly speaking, just carrying from Manish Ji said that that just adds another dimension to gaming. Additionally, the next step, when we talk about metaverse, it's a very amorphous term. But I think Web3 is an integral part of metaverse. And I think we can talk about it later also. But when we go into gaming and metaverse, I think Web3 will be something that will differentiate it from what we used to call virtual space. Virtual space plus Web3 is what will make metaverse and gaming in that uh, much more lucrative. Thanks. Thanks, Throb. I'm going to actually move now to the, to the second option here of how Web3 is going to play the role and help eSports kind of uh, go further apart if you could share your point of view. Sure, I think <coughs> gaming we look at uh, different buckets, right? Uh, there's eSports, there's real money gaming, there's hyper casual gaming. Esports is like what Manish was mentioning, like the, the games like the likes of PUBG, Free Fire, Call of Duty, right? So <clears throat> the aspect of decentralization, which Manish just touched upon, that assets being uh, uh, looked upon as an investment uh, than just like a spend is something which is remarkable and thanks to the technology behind it, which is like smart contracts behind NFTs, right? Uh, and gaming is something which would take it to masses, but gamers don't bother about that. And esports also has a dimension of uh, celebrity gamers, right? Like we at Stan are working with, you know, some of the very popular gamers, esports players, right? Um, so the connect of these gamers with their fandom is something which uh, is interesting, right? We see like millions of eyeballs every day on YouTube. Like these guys are streaming and people are just watching. Uh, it's like just consuming, uh, you know, having food and uh, just watching live streams of games, right? Uh, so that fandom piece is interestingly uh, coupled to the use case of NFT, which is, you know, ownership and uh, how I can uh, track who is owning the assets, so that demand and supply, right? So some of the interesting use cases which have prevailed is like if I am owning an NFT of my favorite YouTuber, I get a chance to, you know, play with him or you know, I get a chance to meet him. So all these different, uh, you know, capabilities which blockchain is offering is something which is definitely taking esports to the next level. Thanks, thanks, Ma. Abhishek, how do you see esports becoming more exciting with Web3 in terms of how sure. it will change the game and the fun going forward? Sure. So, I mean, as a community guy, I would like to boil down it to the ground reality. I mean, what Manish has said, what Parth has said is actually talking about the high level technology that is behind all the all the ecosystem, right? If I talk about what Web3 will do for the gamers is that it will add an additional source of monetization towards their career growth, right? As a, as a community guy, I am always questioned by the gamers that Abhishek, how will you be able to improve my revenue? How will you, and their parents also call me that, how will you be able to increase the revenue of my kid who is playing games so that he can consider it as a full-time career option? With the introduction of Web3, I've seen so many creators all across the globe. Like in the West, there are a couple of creators by the name of Bryson and Jonah 
who are actually creating Web3 only content and they are actually trading their in-game skins as uh, even Dhruv said, they are actually trading their in-game skins and their fans are also trading their in-game skins in the form of NFT and making some sort of a revenue and the economy around it. So that's how I think it will be a good thing to have Web3 integrated into the Indian ecosystem, although Manish is trying very good, I mean, for the with IndieGG to bring that ecosystem to India, but in India we are still lagging behind because of the lack of education, obviously. Absolutely. Thanks. So uh, I'm going to stay with you, Abhishek, for your next question. We are going to move to the influencer side. Can you tell me from uh, the creator economy and how is it going to influence or disrupt uh, the space, right? The gaming space. So again, as I told you, right, disruption happens with the monetization. As we see in Web2 platforms or the creators who are actually create have created an economy through web 2 platforms like streaming content on YouTube, playing games like PUBG Mobile or BGMI. Although we have seen a winter season twice by getting it banned. So again, the thing is that right now, creators have a very limited scope of monetization and I, and I can say it is a very unilateral. They are dependent heavily on the ad revenues. I mean, in, in India, we have the lowest ad revenues, even lesser than Pakistan, right? And then they are dependent on super chats or tips. Again, the kind of trust the fan has on the creator to fulfill his or her demands is something we are struggling a lot. And then brands. But with Web3, again, whenever the economy is there, wherein the trading can happen of the in-game assets, or, I mean, he was telling ki StarCraft ke accounts are being sold, right? They are being sold not on not in the not on the ecosystem right they are just being sold off the market but if we can create a market through web3 it will be a definitely a disruptive scope wherein creators gamers i mean all of us as an ecosystem will be able to generate good amount of revenue and make again the gaming and esports a good career option great thanks thanks part any thought there on how uh, it's going to disrupt the creator space? I think <clears throat> we are seeing a lot of creators getting, you know, coming up uh, thanks to COVID and, uh, you know, Instagram's <laughs> popularity with Reels and TikTok, right? Uh, with respect to gaming, creators face a uh, lot of, uh, like Abhishek was mentioning, that revenue and earnings are a biggest concern for a creator's life, right? lot of things are there, a lot of avenues in Web3 which are still not explored. I mean, people have tried creator tokens and stuff, although NFTs is something which is still running. But let's say if I'm a creator, I'm streaming on YouTube and I get to launch my token and people buy that to support me for my growth, right? So all those concepts is something which I really want to see, uh, you know, creating success and leading to more creators which are becoming successful, right? Like if I can fuel my favorite creator's growth in some way or the other, and I can, you know, probably earn something out of it later down the line, or maybe I don't have, uh, you know, uh, uh, a thought about earning itself. If I'm a big fan of somebody, like, you know, if you, if you see something on Instagram or Reddit, we just press the like button, right? If somehow that like button gets to, you know, give the money to the earning to the creator, then it, it's a different ball game. And I think probably some of some, somebody is trying that out. We are doing it with NFTs. Uh, we haven't touched the FTs and token space yet. But creator tokens is something which I am really looking forward to maybe helps a creator, a budding creator to solve for his uh, problem of fueling the growth. Sure, sure, great. So uh, Manish, I want uh, to ask you about, uh, we come to actually talking about the plane on concept what the future of Web3 gamers looks like, uh, careers, side incomes, you know, everything that you can throw light on the play and on concept for everyone. So I think, uh, Sharmila, there are two things which I see evolving. One is players as creators and that channel of asset which they have created distributing could be through their own streaming 
a fan captive audience. It could be through P2P marketplaces and all of it. But fundamentally, how do I really create an asset which somebody sees in value inside the game, outside the game? And for that, I believe we are still very, very early. Uh, first, the games have to be very good. And I believe 24, 25 is when you start seeing some good quality games coming in. And then economies will be built on top of that. The second piece which I believe is important, which is what at least uh, my thesis is, that in countries like India, Indonesia, Egypt, Brazil, Nigeria, Kenya, where there is a large gamer population, um, these countries can offer variety of job roles uh, to global games. Uh, that's what I have been before MBA, I was an Infosys and I was a product of the body shopping, if you will, um, as an engineer. Uh, but we were giving our tech services to the global enterprises. And I think the, the amount of gaming population we have, interest in gaming, and really the deep skills. And I could really offer a job of a tester, I could offer a job of a tournament operator, discord manager, community support, uh, clan chief. I could do really a you know, game tournament auditor, I can do a caster, I can do an influencer. So there can be so many job roles which global games today need, right? And why can't countries which have young, higher percentage of young population, large gaming adoption with huge amount of time, they become global factories uh, for these kind of games. And this is not something which has not happened. Fashion we have seen how Bangladesh really took off as a, as, a, as a global hub for fashion. So my thesis is the jobs, given that global boundaries have finished, more so COVID demonstrated that there is no physical boundaries of nation which exist and with decentralization, you're going to build new nations, new states, which have no geographical boundaries and there'll be on one common grammar language of gamers. These job roles will become very important and these will, what Abhishek was talking about, will form careers. Now, if you really become a very good tester of a first person shooter, nothing stops you from making a lakh or two per month because there's a global game which is first person shooter which sees your track record on chain and looks at your submissions of testing which you have done and they like you and they can reach out. So the entire concept which happened in the US of freelancer economy uh, can and will happen within the purview of gaming uh, is what my kind of thought process is. No, great, I think this is, uh, this is a good thought where we move towards what international opportunities, earning, income, and basically more a global concept than just of course, India is growing, there's, there's no doubt, by leaps and bounds, and we're all here right at the beginning of things, and hopefully it's working out for everyone. Uh, any, anything you all want to say on careers and income or streams, please? Although even I am, my livelihood is paid by gamers who play games every day, right? And see, I mean, at Trinity, we have actually done a really good concept last year wherein we visited colleges and universities to explain and give awareness about gaming and how the careers can be formed along gaming. Earlier, I used to think that everybody in the educational side of business, they hate gaming, right? They always talk about, I mean, you should not play games, otherwise you will spoil your career, you will, you will not be able to stand on your feet, right? But Last year, I have had interacted with so many deans, registrars, and I mean chancellors of multiple universities, and they have actually welcomed this concept of gaming, right? Yeah. And that is something India is understanding what the gaming is all about. I mean, we can now very well set that khelogye kudoge to badoge nawab, right? So I mean, that is the concept the gaming is bringing to the power. I don't know about how cricket or sports ecosystem grew in India because I was very small at that time. But what I have seen is in the last four years, I have gamers and we are managing a community of 1000 plus gamers. 
and on an average these gamers are earning at least $300 or $400 per month. That is something that is remarkably very strong, right? I mean, I am an engineer, engineer when I was placed at some company, right, I don't want to take name, I was not getting more than 25,000 per month, right? So that is something really great that is happening. Great, we've established there's great opportunity and I think people start realizing that gaming is definitely, there's enough career space there and more like something needs to be Shami, taken. Just one point here, I think a uh, lot of time another criticism which is thrown at gaming is that it doesn't create at mass level employment. It still is very niche, it still is very small and I think that also we need to change and that's why it's scale, it is important that how do we really become a factory for the world? Uh, like we did some 35,000 people made $5 in the month of June by playing games but catering to a lot of quest as we call for the global games. Now we believe the 35,000 is just the beginning. We want to get this number to a million, million plus guys in India. We want to get it to a 10 to $12 per month. 50% uh, of India has monthly income of $50 or less. So can we really make this, whether it's a primary income, micro income, supplementary income, but a meaningful income for millions of houses? I think then we will be truly talking about careers and uh, parents will be secure that there is stability and security. But till such time, that Nawaf thing will become a goal and a dream for us to cherish. Right. I guess uh, public opinion molding and educating them is definitely a way and I think we are all doing our bit. In fact, Abhishek last year did uh, 23 towns and educating people in college and explaining what career opportunities there are. I think everyone's doing their bit, something or the other. Dhruv, any, anything here you want to say? I mean, yeah, so I think mostly a lot of things are covered. I'll just take a slightly uh, macroeconomic view of what's happening, correct? Right? Uh, Web3 gaming, obviously, but generally gaming, if you look. Um, majority of Indian population is under the age of 35, correct? Right? Uh, ages 14 to 34 is what we are seeing that gamers, they're, they're older gamers also, but it, 14 to 34 is what we recognize as core gamers, correct? Right? That's the population of gamers. Now, India is also going to be the largest uh, middle income group. And this 14 to 34 in next five years or 10 years will be forming the world's largest middle, middle income group, correct? Earlier, what was entertainment? You had o cinemas, uh, sports, and then OTTs came, came, everything yes. that came. Now entertainment, the definition of entertainment is moving towards gaming. Your streaming, like, streaming platform like Netflix, Amazon, these guys are looking at gaming as the next place where this middle class, huge majority of population is going to spend the next buck, correct? And so gaming as an entertainment form will grow. Gaming as an earning platform will grow. Gaming at the back end of creating games, that economy will grow. And also consumption entertainment will grow. I'm saying that on a macroeconomic level, gaming is the next big thing in media entertainment and generally otherwise. Right. But, uh, and, and that's what I'm saying. So all these things fit into that idea in the next 10 years. Superb, great, very positive. Uh, so, Part, do you want to share something or should we, in fact, I want to ask you a next question, but please, do you want to say something here? No, I think uh, the sleeping tiger statement, right? <laughs> uh, I really don't want to see that happening, that we are just trying to slow down our pace because in terms of talent, infrastructure, we are definitely not missing the bus. Uh, a lot of our developers are uh, fueling growth of Web3 companies globally. Um, love to see if uh, the dollars get circulated inside the country itself, right? A lot of money is still flowing outside the country and maybe Web3 sort of solves that for us, that the economy is circulated inside the country itself and the gaming industry in the country sort of uh, leverages and grows. Nice, nice. So. Uh, one of the last topics we want to discuss is going to be something I think everyone is going to be excited about is communities, right? And I think even in the earlier panel they were discussing communities, but we're going to talk about how we're developing the Web3 gaming communities here. I think each one is doing their own thing. They're huge, they're growing day to day. 
uh, what does the future look like? What do you think is going to play? What are going to be the key, uh, you know, triggers to building, forming, and growing these communities? So my take on this is uh, <coughs> we need to get all those uh, Web2 crowd or let's say the, uh, the original or like the non-Web3 guys who don't understand MetaMask wallets or tokens to sort of, you know, get absorbed in this uh, in terms of use case or anything. I mean, abstraction works phenomenally well. Uh, don't serve them anything technology just keep serving the use case and people start absorbing it. And if it's actually a value add for a gamer or anybody in the community, it spreads like fire, right? And especially in gaming, it's, it's a lot to do with people referring each other, bringing the next guy to, you know, come in and join, like Manish was telling about clan chiefs and stuff, right? So a uh, lot of fueled um, growth happens through referrals. Uh, we see a lot of strong, uh, uh, Discord communities, Telegram communities. In fact, we also have, you know, s seen that these communities have been enablers to anything and everything. We start, uh, even if it's a new format of a game or anything uh, which people have not seen before, right? Um, that's why we've been very particular at uh, solving for the user experience that if the end user doesn't want to know about the blockchain tech or anything, Let's not, you know, uh, be loud about it. But if they start learning and enjoying it, feed them more, right? So I think the future is, uh, I believe uh, that's how it should be, that everybody who is Web2 should start absorbing Web3. Why not? Why not? Absolutely. Manish, any growth triggers you see for communities? What is going to be responsible key development uh, points that you think is going to aid and build these further? See, I think um, the role which we need to play is at three levels. One is about engagement with policy, shaping narrative, perception, government relationships. Uh, you do not want, you want a positive environment around uplifting human stories and you do not want uh, to be castigated as somebody who is doing chori chupke kuch kar rahe, right? So I think that's something is very one level, first level which needs to be done. And it's a different community which you need to build. Community of policy makers, community of like-minded people within the executive, legislative and judiciary systems. The second thing which we need to really do is build certain kind of educators or content evangelist community which can really talk about uh, the how could really where where should somebody spend its time why should they spend time like Abhishek was talking about we are we don't go to school to learn we go to school to get a job uh, here also what kind of educative content with what games or what kind of activities can be created so that we can really create certain amount of hope that if you were to spend your time in this activity, it has an ROI. We are a very kitna deti a country, right? Uh, the third piece, which I think will automatically happen as Path was saying about the use case, when there are good games, the gamers are the most smart, they are the early adopters and they will figure out within a game where to, how to really kind of which game to play, which game to become hero, which game to really start fingering out communities. I have 15 years, I have not seen the early adopters to be taught something. In fact, you learn from them and you learn those steps and feed it to the point too that this is the kind of educative content some early adopters are making and you can press it for mass adoption. So I think all these one, two, three are kind of intertwined. And they are not sequential, they are parallel. And that's why all of us who are sitting here and are truly looking at Web3 blockchain should look at at least a 10-year horizon, if not more. And these are all multidimensional problems which we need to work on working with different communities and solving it. Great, great. <coughs> so, I mean, uh, 
I would not like to comment on the future because what I believe with Manish, Parth, Dhruv looking at the policy side, Manish looking at the platform side or the game side, I mean eventually the future will be bright. What I want to contribute over here is as the community, be, as the community guy, right now we need the education to be imparted to the gamers, right? Because gaming industry, I mean, in due to COVID-19, I mean, it is a blessing in disguise that all these content creators, they grew so fast. I mean, at the very great pace. Some, I mean, some of these content creators, they don't even understand how to understand the analytics or the tax compliances, right? Right now, what our biggest job is at Trinity is how do we, how do we make sure that these guys adapt these latest technologies and how we can build an army of gaming content creators who are adapting Web3 gaming as and when it comes to India or as and when it grows in India. So that's how we are placed at Trinity. Great. Do you want to say something? Communities, anything? On I, mean, build up I mean, I think, I think people sitting on the dais already <laughs> know more about community in gaming than anyone uh, in the country. But at least from my view, I think, as Manish said, correct? Like, Gamers, by definition, want to create communities, correct? Because interactive uh, joy is something that they're looking for, correct? And if, if you look at India, correct? Orkut, I don't know if people remember Orkut. No one thought that if you create a group, there'll be millions of people that'll go and interact on one topic. I still remember there was a Harry Potter group there. It has millions of users from India, correct? Indians and Brazilians took over that thing, correct? You give them one, some place where they can interact, have fun, connect to each other, and they can do it recurrently in a safe space. And obviously, if you add monetization on top, I think they'll themselves create communities around it. And they'll tell us what they need for that community. So I think that is ingrained in a gamer, in a young gamer. And I think we just need to follow their lead and give them enough opportunities right. so they'll tell us what to do. Auto engagement, I believe, everything. You just put them together and I guess it moves. So great. I think, I think this has been uh, interesting with everyone's uh, point of views. And I think we've addressed uh, most of the things here from policy challenges, esports, from creator perspective, the economy there, the play and earn concept, and finally the communities aspect. I think you guys have been fabulous. Thank you so much, and uh, let's keep going. I think Web3 Gaming is the future. We're all sitting right here, yeah? Thanks, guys. Thanks. <laughs>